Welcome back to Meshman Studio. So this is the now the last installment here of uh, the 4.6 open beta features. We're gonna take a look here. We now here reach the material system improvements and I'm happy to see that we now can actually swap the, the default uh, geometry preview icon we get from the classic shader ball so we can have other objects as well and that makes it now possible to also hook up the geo channels we, we need to drive our materials so yeah okay so first off here this is actually the shader ball that was generated that you previously generated the material thumbnails and you can actually find it here now under your preferences and you have this thumbnail uh, swatch here or thumbnail section. So by default here, we can see that this is where the shader ball that is used to create the material uh, previews is living. So if I reset this and I actually override the environment light here to be the same here that I use here in my preview. So if I would create a material, it would use this HDR here that I now have set here. So let's actually reset it. And we can see this is the stock behavior. I also here um, changed the um, names here because my material, I have the geo uh, suffix or prefix geo as in a geo channel because I might want to use a different ambient occlusion or something in my texturing that's not the same type of bake as uh, my geo channel so therefore everything I import geo channel related have the prefix geo and then whatever effect it is so yeah so for example I actually now here is driving this material here we can see here if I start to I just made it like two materials driven by geo channels so we can go in here and take a look inside from the earlier episode we can see here I use geo AO and uh, curvature to drive the blending of this metal and this painted metal here okay so yeah very basic and we have some options here if you want to for example make more or less scratches and stuff like this we can also have a break up here for example yeah so nothing uh, unusual there it's just an ordinary setup if i now want to create a um, for example uh, another type of uh, preview let's say that i want to apply this on my uh, lens geometry for example so let's see how we can do that so we'll go back here to my preferences and um, go here to thumbnail so we can now rewrote this for example instead of the material ball there i created here the my new swatch projector file so let's take a look at what that is a projector file is essentially if i go in here and frame projectors here if i would take this we have different projectors here if I would frame it something like this save out a projector and then you right click and go to save a projector and save it to a location it's gonna use this projector for the angle or the framing so one thing to have in mind if I for example take this projector uh, so what you need to think about here is if I zoom out here with the Z button, uh, you can see actually the bounding box here. Essentially, you want to frame it so the it covers as much as possible there. So if I want to do that, go back here, make current. You essentially almost want to frame it like this. Projectors, like a new one, like that. And then zoom out to see that yeah now it's too far so you, you need to be kind of need to be there if you want to use the full uh, base so you need need to frame it in whatever reason uh, in, in whatever uh, cropping you have there so let's go back here set it up go to my preferences and take the last couple of things here so we have the lens there we want to take the projector so i've saved all of this into a uh, preview place here on my uh, drive here so there we have the swatch file and then we want to load 
my uh, bakes, so I baked out those as well. So first off, let's see ambient occlusion. We want to take curvature. So let's now actually save this as a new material here and see what happens. Old export this material and uh, let's save it somewhere. Let's on my desktop. So now it's important the images that I pointed to there to drive the gizmos and packaging or all of this into a material. So we can drag it soon into the shelf here and see what happens. And we should have a uh, material ball in the form of a, a lens, a, a scene lens. Shelf, uh, let's dock this, go to my desktop. There you go. So now we have a, uh, a different type of uh, preview there. So yeah, but uh, as you can see, the shelf is not an ideal solution to store images or materials. I would log, rather like to see something similar to this that you can actually, you know, like change resolution and stuff like this for uh, material. So I hope uh, Foundry is looking into because the shelf here is it's, it's not the best ideal scenario. But at least now we can start to change the shader ball more easily. So yeah, that's a good thing. Okay, so that concludes how we can change the material swatch when we generate material so now we're gonna take a look here at templates next yeah so material templates first off what's templates and what's it good for so we, for example here you have this um, material library here from uh, megascan and you can see here this these are the one that i have bought here from uh, this uh, material library different um, materials and um, what you have here, if I take a look here, I open the folder here, you can see here I have ambient occlusion, we have different type of effects here to drive certain um, aspects of uh, the shader, but some of these is not really optimized for my type of shading, for example. So that's where templates come in into handy. And what is a template then? Um, yeah, so we have here the tool here, Material Ingest tool, and if I use this, I can define here, for example, what shader here, and you can point it to a specific uh, material template. So let's take a look here. I have built the material and I have dumb inputs for the different um, maps taken from this material library and then I can hook up additional node to drive the shading in a more advanced way and also utilize this to build a, more like a user-friendly system for uh, artists. Let's take a look. Uh, first off, yeah, it's gonna import my template here. So file, import material and I saved it here to material templates. I use Pixar Surface and just take a look here inside what this one has. So if I control and uh, double click, we open up uh, a tab. So what I did done here essentially is all of these nodes here is the same uh, node here name as the output. And this one in my case is a tileable node and I have hooked up material properties. So if I go here to the root node, double click let's so I've, I've have here for example uh, set up already linked um, uh, properties for scale or rotation of the pattern I have a few uh, grade node here in the example like a uh, hue shift uh, some ways to specular roughness in level node and uh, a few uh, remaps here for the artist so we're going back here we can see here tweak call here it's this node so it's uh, i exposed here my um, hsv settings in this node so we can see i expose them during this branch here so everything is kind of set up to be used as a uh, material ingest template and um, in the settings here that doesn't have anything I have hooked up the same material values actually as if I would create a new Pixar surface um, 
some of the settings, for example, uh, it ships with only one specular lobe, but uh, the Pixar Surface has three specular lobes. So I've set it to become like a default material without any additional um, shading associated. And that's something I build when I ingest material rather than at this stage. For example, some more advanced materials, I will probably use masks and uh, other type of node operations to build it. So this is a way to build like a, a basic framework and reuse it later on. So let's uh, take one of these materials and just see what happens when I ingest it Do you, uh, using this template here, for example. Let's go back, we can just actually delete this. And let's point it, let's go to my bridge first. Say I wanna take this dumpster here and just take this material into uh, my shader there. So it's, it's this look case in here, it's gonna copy it, I'm gonna use it to just browse for this one. Tools, material in yes tool. First off we here have here, uh, you see here my material template. This is the file that I specify, so I saved my template that I recently showed you to a location and this is our browse to it. And then we can see here I have a uh, Albedo. So this is the, actually the the name in the files in the, that we previously saw there. The roughness, the albedo. The, those are specified in that um, shader or material. So there's a way here to first uh, kind of use it as a uh, debugging. I use it for debugging. So. If I go here, instead of build materials or export materials, you have a display search results only. Then we get this. So this is the maps it finds here that uh, we can uh, use here. So uh, it finds um, albedo, that's specular roughness, uh, ambient occlusion, normal bump. I wanna use these here and hook up my material. So that's fine. So we can see that it has found matches when I browse to this and it's gonna import those to my locations where I had this tileable node with the stream name defined. And then it's gonna take the image here and load it instead of uh, this uh, blank node there. Okay, close this, build materials in project and yeah, let's try and just hit create material and it will import it and we'll see what we get. I can hook it up to my shader and see what happens. Misc, that's the name. Let's swap this shader from this um, painted metal scratches to this instead and see what happens. And there we have it, the dumpster. Let's change the scale of the pattern there and take a look here what we got. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that's my material that I just imported. So yeah, it kind of works. I guess I'm gonna spend some time building a, a more advanced uh, ingest template than this because yeah. And also Foundry, you really need more material creation nodes to uh, do some uh, serious materials. So better uh, remaps and stuff like this. Essentially, I need extension pack to build my materials, to be honest, because it has a lot of nice uh, nodes that's really needed to build advanced materials. So first off here, just take a look here inside here again. And now we can see here now actually my blank uh, tile nodes actually uh, picked up the images that I found here in my material. Let's take a look here. That's uh, templates uh, and the material shader ball, I guess. There's also a way here, to be honest, um, to import the actual thumbnail from the tool. So let's take a look at that. If you know the name, you can actually ingest the thumbnail from the library. Um, let's go back to tool here. I'm not gonna do that because it doesn't make any sense for me to do it because my shading is gonna be very different. So I rather actually offline rendered my shader balls, but you can here 
specify a thumbnail template and here's some uh, formulas so going back to the bridge here you would pick up the thumbnail from the actual material library uh, in like Megascan for example you actually have these let's go back here you want to point it to uh, one of these you want to point it to this preview image here this one it's gonna take this one and uh, swap the material shader ball to this one instead and that's probably fine but uh, the shading in the pixel surface for my uh, liking is not uh, it's gonna be the same because I I have a totally different way to drive uh, my specular with the physical spec and all of that so I'm just gonna use it as an ingest tool at this moment and hopefully we will get better previewing options. Rather would say, would like to see this Modo render engine here to be renamed, for example, material authoring rendering or whatever, material swatch. And instead of using Modo, you would actually point it to the render engine of a choice uh, and let that one handle the rendering of the shader ball and uh, package it into material. That would be nice. Um, hopefully that might come down the line. I hope uh, something similar because that's it's really needed to have a proper preview of a material rather than an open GL to be really sure what's happening. Yeah, so that concludes what was uh, added into the 4.6 open beta and it is uh, out now. So go and download it off if you're on maintenance. If you want to support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. See you on the channel. Bye bye.